Welcome to our lecture online. We should always be able to transform from the time domain to the phasor domain. Now notice the phasor domain, also sometimes known as the frequency domain. How do we go back and forth? Well, if we start off with having the voltage expressed as a function of time in terms of the maximum voltage times the cosine of omega t plus potentially a phase angle, then when we go to the phasor domain, this would be the vector quantity which is equal to the magnitude and the phase angle. Same for the current, if we express the current in the circuit as a function of time which is equal to the maximum current times the cosine of omega t plus phi, again we have the vector quantity, the phasor which is equal to the magnitude times the phase angle. But what if the function is described in terms of the sine instead of the cosine? So the voltage as a function of time is the maximum voltage times the sine of omega t plus some phase angle. Then it would be better if we then transform it to the cosine function and we do that via the minus 90 degree shift. Remember when we had the, the uh, vectors like this, so we had the horizontal axis which was the cosine of omega t and then we had the sine right here so it would be the positive sine of omega t and then remember that if we want to go from the cosine of omega t to the sine of omega t there would be a shift of minus 90 degrees so that's why when we go from the sine to the cosine we simply subtract 90 degrees so the sine versus the cosine that's a 90 degree difference and that means that if we now express this in the phasor domain instead of simply writing the phase angle as phi we write as phi minus 90 degrees so the vector that would be the phase vector here, would be equal to the maximum, the magnitude of the vector, times the phase difference, which is the phi minus 90 degrees. And of course, we do exactly the same for the current. If the current is expressed in terms of the sine, then we want to convert it to the cosine again with the minus 90 degrees, because the sine is 90 degrees behind the cosine, so I have to shift it by 90 degrees. And then we express the current in terms of the maximum current times the phase angle of phi minus 90 degrees. So regardless of how the time domain function is described in terms of the cosine or in terms of the sine, we should always convert it as follows. And for the sine, we first convert it to cosine with the 90 degree shift. And that's how it's done.